have any further items from members or requests to agendize future items? Council Member Fish? I know we're busy. I don't know when we're going to get to it, but I think, uh, you know, I'm feeling the call to have a discussion about gun safety um, here in Culver oh. City. Um, you know, I think that the, I, what I heard was looking at how to make our um, existing ordinances, I'm not even going to say the words, um, but, <laughs> but how to enforce our existing ordinances, um, how to expanding protection to places of worship um, and reviewing uh, the ordinances to see if there are other best practices throughout the state. So that's one. Anybody interested in that discussion this summer? Well, I, I uh, have some comments on that one. I want to add some yeah, yeah, aspects to Since that. we're on this subject, please. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is that you know, there is actually something we as council can do. Most of this uh, issue with guns is, sits with state and, and federal, right? And uh, you know, I grew up in, in, in Europe where we have a totally different approach to who can own guns and, and what is required to own a gun and so on. So, uh, you know, I think we definitely should do everything. We and this might be n uh, new statistics for you, but, um, you know, we, during the discussions uh, two years ago, the, the police department came back to us with a new traffic directive. And, and the effect of that is that um, before we had the new traffic director. Uh, our PD were confiscating uh, somewhere around 60 to 70 illegal guns a year. Um, now we are down to about 36 because uh, uh, of the change in the traffic directory. But the thing here is also that in our surrounding cities, the number of guns they are, are confiscating has actually increased quite dramatically. And we saw that just before we I implemented the new traffic directory, or the PD implemented a new traffic directory. And during those three months in the beginning of, um, of um, 2021, or in January, February, we actually confiscated 12 guns each month. So if we really want to do something that we can, that's in our power, would be to invite the police department to come back to us with a suggestion how they could modify the traffic directory to get back to confiscating illegal gun at the level they did before. So I would like to bring that up also. And I was gonna say, I was gonna ask to agendaize that discussion um, before you brought it up uh, in terms of uh, the policies that we can look at locally to do as much as we can and to re-examine and or um, bring into compliance um, some, of, some of the operators here in the city. So I would be uh, happy to bring that discussion back. And the other thing, you know, going back on the REACH code, uh, we started the discussion about actually uh, removing methane from new construction outside of the REACH code, and I don't know where all that stands, but then there was the, there was a campaign that was focused in an article about uh, AstroTurf <laughs> campaigns. It was a social media campaign to sort of discredit that effort. It's been enough time. I would love if there's room in the budget, if you need a consultant to kind of bring that forward. Um, well, I thought that was going to come up in the REACH codes. I thought the REACH codes are going to be on a, because, uh, I'm blanking on her name, but one of the folks who left before, um, I asked if we were going to really specifically talk about natural gas uh, and the REACH codes as part of the general plan process or solo. Um, before she said left, she said we would tackle it in, in the REACH codes. And I think those should be scheduled. Well, they were scheduled for a meeting in like May or June, but I think it might be July now. That's fine, and whenever, I just think we, I think it is good, it's been a couple of years. Um, and we're about to have some construction in this town, so we should, if we want to decarbonize those buildings, we ought to do it. Um, and then third, um, I guess that the uh, healthcare worker minimum wage initiative uh, has cleared its signature threshold. If there is the opportunity to get a impact report um, on worker retention, cost of living, that type of thing. I'd love to agendize that discussion so that we 
have what inform whatever information. We I, we're going to be crunched on this no matter what because we didn't start this process. Um, so we're going to have to deal with you know uh, this initiative. Whatever information gathering I think we should is is contemplated under the elections code. Um, I think we should agendize that sooner rather than later so that we're not further behind the ball. Yeah, that's fine. Mayor, if I may, um, one thing is we need to get clear um, statements on the record of who's consenting to an agenda item being, um, to an item being agendized. So um, I would request either you do a vote or the clerk um, specifically identifies which council members so that we know we have three or more hot nodding heads because it's, it was unclear at the last meeting and we received some public comment about that. It was even unclear to some staff members too. So <laughs> we oh. want to um, yeah, just Yeah, usually just rely on Jeremy to watch. Yeah, sure about that. So well. if, um, maybe take the easier ones first. Is there a consensus about reach codes or what, did you decide that that's oh. coming back anyway? Those, those should be coming up. So we don't need to worry about that one. Yeah, we don't, we don't need to. Okay, yeah. and then I think the the um, health care minimum wage item comes back naturally in the course, but are you, so I'm not quite sure what you're requesting on if, that one. If there is, I just don't want us to be, we're going to be crunched for time, I think, um, and if there's anything that we can foresee um, that, you know, because I guess we can, can opt not to get reports or information about this, but given how much information we're going to provide voters and ourselves in contemplating a broader minimum wage initiative that's that's from us i don't want to just kind of throw this to the public and say i don't know we didn't you know this we didn't do it i would like to provide i would like to be able to share with voters some information that the city's gained and I, my understanding is that um, calling for reports are, is one of the things that we can do in response to an initiative correct so yeah just like to make sure that we're not doing that at the last minute um, not that that's your inclination. I just kind of wanted to okay. flag that and make sure that. Yes, we're good, good suggestion. I don't know that that probably needs um, consensus. I think the clerk can use her due, due diligence to make that happen. Okay, so then the, um, the tougher. Sorry. That was uh, impact report on worker retention for health care workers in relation to the minimum wage, initi wage initiative. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the trickier one is uh, maybe getting a little more clarity on the uh, firearms it, issue is, is exactly what the discussion item is you'd like to see. Uh, current, I, I would say current, uh, currently operative ordinances in the city around um, gun purchases um, and ordinances that apply to uh, gun store operations and uh, an assessment of the level of compliance. Uh, and then I, I think more generally we're also just looking at if there, because this is mostly a federal issue, federal and state, but if there are any other things that other municipalities have done uh, in regards to uh, safer um, interactions with guns, uh, we already moved forward on the uh, gun storage locker issue years ago, but are there other things that other municipalities have done to try to keep uh, their gun owners and non-gun owners safe? Okay, I think I think I understand. So, one item is um, what the ordinances the city currently has on the book and an assessment of compliance and enforcement. Another item um, is looking at what other cities have done that we may not have on our books as, uh, surrounding gun safety issues. And then I know you're on, I mean, Council Member Erickson had, had made a request as well. Yeah, I brought up the issue with the, the new traffic directive, which clearly has, uh, has limited the amount of illegal guns that we uh, uh, take off the streets, right? It's a dramatic difference. So I would like us to actually have a, a discussion of that and also ha have the police department come and explain what they could do to get back to the, the numbers of guns that they were confiscating before because that's really what we want, right? Get the guns off the streets. So shall we include that in the discussion item? 
That was a distinct, not not a community call from the event this past weekend. If Councilmember Erickson wants to call for that independently, but I just want to reflect that what happened this past week was an explicit acknowledgement that when guns are brought into schools and additional school resource officers that there tends to be more fatalities and more violence that tends to happen. So that was directly lifted up by youth at the event on Saturday and there were no additional calls for what Councilman McMurrin, uh, excuse me, Councilman Erickson is stating, um, so uh, if he I, wants to call for that independently, that is fine, but I do not support that. I think it would need to be a, a separate agenda. Okay, item. so we'll just take the, the, the first. So what I hear from we, you, you are not interested in starting to remove I was more guns clear. from the streets again. It's time to go. I was really clear. Thank That's you. That's really interesting, because this is what we can do, and we can do that next month. Sir, can we start getting guns off the street? Let's, let's not do this. It's late. I, I think we're getting a little bit yeah. too, too into discussion right now. Um, I, I think we could just see. So the three items that I just read back, um, do you want to get, can we just see who the three nodding heads are on that? Yeah. Yeah, I think we got three nodding heads on that. For the first three that were indicated, I support. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And then I think separately we need to see if we can get three nodding heads for uh, what Council Member Eric's I'll, answer to yes. I'll, um, for the clerk, I'll just say that we received it from Council Members McMoran, Fish, and uh, Mayor Lee. Okay. And then we can check for the se second item and uh, adjourn. So. I, mean, I, I would discuss, I think it would be an interesting discussion in the context of, you know, what has been the result of the city's choice to end the stop and frisk program? Um, you know, some of the, that comes at the cost of a few less guns co confiscated. We should talk about that in context. I'm, I'd be happy to have that conversation because I think, you know, um, other, other jurisdictions have followed our lead in ending stop, vehicular stop and frisk. Um, so it's, I think it's good to really analyze whether, the, how that program's going. Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly in favor of myself. I would be more in favor of just uh, an analysis of just the changes at the police department at some point. Um, I think that would be something that would be worthwhile for the community to hear on a regular basis, and I think that could be incorporated into the discussion. That's not is it? No, no. no. It, it does not seem like we have consensus on this, and it's We've got like two and a half. <laughs> I, I'm seeing Councilmember Fish and Vice Mayor Vera, and Councilmember Erickson. Yes or no? Yes. If it's if yeah, if it's situated, in, if you can live with that discussion, that you know we've got this program that does a lot of things. It reduces racially disparate um, interactions with our police significantly too. When we uh, can it get doesn't. That. Because well, we can, I, I checked should have that public discussion then. It's the same. That's the issue. It's the same. If it's well, fewer people, well, we should have that discussion, obviously. Yeah, I think I, we're having too much discussion right now. <laughs> yeah. So bringing the police department in for a discussion, discussion to stop and frisk, as well as sort of what they can do proactively to get some guns off the street would be a good conversation to have regardless of what. So if that's something that, that you're fine with, Alex, then... Yeah. Well, well said. It's an update. That's in the discussion. That's a good thing. Okay. okay. So I think you have your three right there. Okay. So it looks like Councilmember Fish, Councilmember Erickson, and Vice Mayor Vera um, to agendize a discussion of the impacts from the from stopping the stop and frisk, as well as um, the traffic directory. Directive program is that correct, Councilmember Erickson? Well, it's it's called a traffic directive. Directive. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's not called stop so you, and freeze. An update, an update on on those two aspects is what I was getting. Right, and what can be done? Two different perspectives on the right. same thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Understood. Okay. okay. Um, could Thank you. you. Could you, Heather, could you okay, that? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Yes, so moved. Second, the screen.
we get a roll call vote. We had a motion and a second to adjourn. Thank you very much. Okay, adjournment. I'm sorry, I don't see um, online here. Uh, okay, here we go. Thank you very much. We have a motion by Councilmember McMorrin to adjourn this evening's meeting. Do we have a second, please? Put someone in. Uh, can someone for a second? Uh, okay, and it's been seconded by Councilmember Fish to adjourn this evening's meeting at 1 8 